What's up, friends? I've been helping people evaluate businesses for sale for several years at this point. And one of the more common businesses for sale are FedEx routes. And whenever people are looking at this, a lot of times they want to use margins to be able to evaluate them financially. And there's a number of reasons why I don't like using margins. And they don't actually work whenever you start to uh, build out frameworks or models to evaluate multiple routes in different scenarios and situations. And so today we're going to have a very exciting video of the actual math on why some of these <laughs> ideas don't work. And hopefully by the end of this video, you're going to be able to see percentages or margins or a uh, particular expense and say, oh, 15% is, should that be gas? And you're going to say, don't know, don't care. And it doesn't matter. What matters is actual expenses, which is a unbelievably novel concept evidently, but that's the way to go about it. You have to figure out what the actual expenses are as opposed to using these hacks of percentages of margins. Now, what people want to do when they do try to figure out the actual amount versus the expected or inline uh, margin percentage is they're trying to figure out whether one is better than the other, or maybe one has a particular potential to uh, have upside or has downside potential. These things don't work, and this video is gonna explain why. So let's fire up Excel here. And I've got a theoretical business that we're going to look at together. It's got a million dollars of revenue, and we are going to pretend that there are 10 routes that go along with this particular contract. Now. I'm going to use the word route in the classical sense of the word. So it is just essentially a truck and a driver. You pair them up, they go out and deliver stuff. It does has nothing to do with um, uh, territory, uh, size of the territory, zip codes, any sort of thing like that. It's just a truck, a driver, you call it a route. Okay, so we got 10 routes, let's say. All right, well, what's our payroll expense? Well, there's a lot of expenses here that you'll notice are missing like where's payroll taxes where's the training expense where's the expense for the scanners or the uniforms a lot of stuff there we're going to ignore that for the sake of brevity so this video doesn't go on for forever and secondarily this is going to be enough expenses for you to see that uh, these margins in these frameworks are going to break and so let's take a look at our payroll let's just call it fifty thousand dollars per year per truck we got 10 of them on the road easy math fifty thousand uh well five hundred thousand rather little harder math than I thought. <laughs> um, so for rentals and repairs, let's call it $5,000 per year per truck. You got five, you got 10 trucks on the road, 5,000, it's 50,000, right? Ooh, 5%, is, is that a reasonable amount? Who knows, who cares? Uh, insurance and miscellaneous, let's say it's uh, $7,000 uh, per year per truck on the road. You got 10 of them, so 70,000. Gas, okay, let's spend a little bit more time here. With gas, let's just pretend for the sake of simplicity that it's only a five-day-a-week operation, okay? And those trucks, when they go out, they fill up every day, and it costs them $60 a day. Whether it's gas or diesel or DEF or whatever it is, doesn't matter. Again, let's just call it 60 bucks a day. Well, if we only have a five-day-a-week operation, let's call it $60 times 250 days times our 10 routes that are on the road. Okay, so now our gas is at 15%, which maybe that's in line with expectations. Payroll's 50%, maybe it is in line, doesn't matter. So let's show you another example of pretty much a, an identical type of route in terms of the operations. We still have 10 drivers, 10 routes, essentially. But let's say this one, I'm going to say is in Tampa. The top one is in Tampa. I'll just put it up here is in Tampa. And then this one we're going to say is in Montana. Okay. The one in Montana does, let's say double the amount of uh, miles. And so it has doubled the amount of gas. Okay. Makes sense. It's rural. It's not downtown Tampa or, you know, a suburban area. So let's just say, for example, this poor contractor in Montana, he has to spend double for his gas. And now he's down to only $80,000 a year in profit. Now, that's only 8%. What can a seller do when he thinks that someone believes in the myth of margins? Well, he can say, look, um, you know, I'm not very savvy at business. Um, you know, I'm just not doing very well. Uh, you could come in here and, and really bring this thing up, maybe 4X or 3X to um, essentially a 23 profit margin, 23%. Uh, you know, I'm down here at 8%. So there's a lot of upside potential here. And someone buys this and they're like, holy crap, this is a terrible contract. I can never 
get this thing to 23%. Why did I ever use margins to begin with? Oh, because someone on a Reddit forum said it to do it? I, I don't know. But the point is, it's like, you're going to look at this and you're going to say, I'm, I can't get this thing to 230K profit. Now, it benefits a seller tremendously to have people believe in these margin myths and whatnot, because then you could start to make these erroneous conclusions and allow them to sell crap business. Now, this doesn't happen in reality. Not that sellers won't try to mislead you. Yes, there are some that will absolutely try to. I think truly for the most part, most FedEx contractors and sellers are decent human beings and not gonna lie to you straight to your face and uh, exaggerate things to, a, to this sort of degree. Yes, they polish stuff up. And yes, there are some contractors that are less than savory, if you will. And I'm sure that's the case in any particular industry. But this doesn't happen in reality because thank goodness we have Father FedEx and they look at this situation and say, oh my goodness, this guy in Montana, he's only at 8% margins. Now they don't care about percentages. They care that he's probably making 80K. They don't like to use margins. I don't like to use margins. Nobody likes to use margins that really wants to have the idea of normalization. Well, what does this normalization mean? It means that we cannot, as a FedEx, as a company with a billion dollar brand, can't have everyone saying, oh, well, we only want routes in Tampa because that's where the money is made. And if you get one of those stupid routes in Montana, you'll never make any money. Well, now everyone that wants to use FedEx in Montana, well, they can't because there's no contractors out there that'll do it. Now the billion dollar brand is maybe not quite a billion anymore. Maybe it's just a lot of millions. And so that brand gets hurt. So they can't have that. What is FedEx, what is FedEx to do? Ah, they have an idea. What if, since this guy in Montana has an extra $150,000 of expenses of gas that the guy in Tampa doesn't. Let's just pay him 150 k more. Voila. And here we are. Identical net incomes. Normalization throughout the country of what contractors are making. And what happens here is instead of this business being identical, which it is. Remember, it's both 10 routes, 10 insurance policies, 10 trucks, 10 insurance. You know, like all, all these things are basically the same except for the gas, right? When the gas changes, the revenue changes. And when that changes, now all of these percentages change. So for someone out there that's looking at these two deals and they say, oh, you know what, this, this deal in Montana is better. You know, it has lower percentage of rental and repair because this one's 5% and this one's 4%. Now that's not a 1% difference. That's a 20% difference. That's a 20% reduction. Now, in all reality, this number is probably much higher because you're doing a lot more miles. You got tow trucks, you got snow in Montana, you got all sorts of stuff, right? So this number in reality is going to be higher, not lower. Now, did the route engineer account for that? Because, hey, maybe this thing should be 70,000, an extra 20K, and maybe this should be uh, 1.17. Oh, well, I don't know. This business doesn't look so good. It's only at 20% profit margins. This one's up over 10% higher. Maybe we should get the one in Tampa. No, they're identical. They're really identical. If you're looking at them financially, now you may say, well, the one in Tampa is easier to manage because we don't have to deal with snow. We don't have to deal with as many miles and having multiple tow truck companies know which area and territory that which one serves versus the other. So there's all sorts of ease of management and sustainability issues that we're brushing aside. We're only looking at the financial side of things because that's what most people want to do whenever they use the word margins in my, in my presence. <laughs> and so if you look at this too, imagine all the other sort of crazy stuff. Let me go back and we're gonna change this back to 1.15 and we're gonna keep this all identical, right? As identical as possible uh, to the point to where it's theoretically impossibly identical, except for the gas. If you look at this and you, let's say, for example, you believed this number to be accurate, 43% was your expectations. Well, I think 43% of payroll should be what we're expecting. And then you go and you find this other guy here in Tampa and he's at 50%. He can very easily say, oh man, I'm such an idiot. I like to pay my guys super well, you know, reduces turnover, makes my life a lot easier. I just like to overpay my guys and they're at 50%. That's, that's why it's a little bit higher than average. And people are like, hey, I like this guy. He sounds at, you know, he is higher than average and he admits it. He must be very honest. He must be very transparent. 
No, he's not. Because these guys are basically getting paid the same. But it looks different because you're looking at these margins. You start looking at these percentages, difference of the repairs. This is going to be misleading anyway. And whenever you're starting to look at, for example, your gas, he may say, look, you know, um, I'm not real smart when it comes to business. Uh, you could probably get this gas cost down and get it back in line with 15%. I'm up at 26%. And people say, oh, upside potential. No, there's no upside potential. This is the way these businesses are. But the percentages are changing due to the difference in the location, how many miles, and so on and so forth. Because thank God, FedEx is not just paying the same amount for the same amount of routes in every part of the country. Also, consider even the exact same route in the exact same terminal. Same 10 routes. Imagine that. So let's just pretend it's Tampa, okay? And we have a million dollars and we go back here to our 150K. What FedEx does in the case of gas prices going up is they just pay you more. So let's say, for example, FedEx says, oh my goodness, you're spending $150,000 more in gas because gas costs have gone up. And so here you are spending $300,000 in gas. Here you are spending 1.15 and you get the same scenario. And it's like, wait a minute, this doesn't even work in the same terminal for the same identical routes in the same territory. No, it doesn't. Because as soon as the gas prices change, this breaks, much less any of the other things that I'm talking about. So if simply gas prices can break these percentages of your expectations, imagine all the other things that are going to break it too. A lot of stuff is going to break this idea and this framework of margins. And if you get in there and you start to think, well, I've got some upside or I've got some downside or this is meeting or exceeding expectations, it's going to lead you down this path where it's like, sometimes you're right, kind of like a stop clock is right twice a day. It's not like it's wrong all the time, right? But it's probably not so valuable as soon as you start to look at routes all across the country, different scenarios and different situations. These percentages are going to change massively. And so as soon as you start to really factor in things like your ease of management, let's say, for example, um, I want to sell my business, right? Or a seller wants to sell his business, right? And he says, you know what? Mm, I'm at 20% and uh, people are expecting 23% because they think that's normal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump inside of a truck and run a route for most of the year. And of course, I'm going to tell the seller that I'm admin only. Uh, seller does payroll and <laughs> whatever they want you to believe. So let's just say it's 450K. Meanwhile, the owner's driving all the time, right? Boop. Hey, there I am. Now my profit margins look great. By the way, completely accurate and even better than this other one at 230 now, granted, we've got some differences in gas costs or whatever here, but again, you could start to twist these things around. Now, let's say gas prices come back down to normal and it's back down to 150,000 and we got a million dollars here. I'm still making this extra 50K. My profit margins look awesome. People are like, whoa, 28%. We like this one a lot better than that other one at only 23%. I think we found a home run here. And then they get in there and they realize, holy crap, I got to run a route every day to be able to achieve this payroll figure. That's how he was doing it. And so it's like, well, that's because it was at 45%. We should have known it was at 50%. Well, what if you thought 45% was right and you thought 50% was too much? Which one's right? And you're going to say, well, gosh, I, I guess I don't know which one was right. Precisely. That's why I don't use margins. I want to try to figure out what the actual expenses are and reverse engineer as many of those expenses that I can based on the settlements, based on what's going on, based on the specific territory in that particular country or, or state or county or whatever it is. And then also based on the gas prices and so on and so forth. Now, a lot of that you can get from the settlements. And when you evaluate those deeply on a line by line basis, as opposed to looking in that lower right hand corner, seeing how much gross was paid out, totaling it up, and then you plugging in these percentages, man, you're going to be in so much of a better spot. And I hope that's where you are, or at least to the point to where you look at percentages and you say, Hey, I believe you, you might be at 23%. You're an honest person, but I don't know whether you should be at 
or whether you should be at 15% because maybe these margins don't really work as much as I really wanted them to be and much as I wanted them to be a shortcut for appropriate and solid evaluation. So anyway, hopefully this helps. Take care and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.